Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. Now, today is just a short little tutorial, and it's we're going to be using a cane that is featured in another free tutorial, this leaf, and a new product that Vernon and I brought in, which is just a simple stainless steel ring. Okay. Now, the thing about this ring is that it has a channel, so it's perfect for filling with clay. Now, I also use this uh, type of ring uh, when I make what a appear to be all clay rings. In other words, when I make the, uh, let's say the mandala ring, um, underneath sometimes there is a, a stainless steel ring itself that I have sort of covered with clay. So that's what this is. Okay, I like them very much. So today is just a simple little tutorial on making a ring like so. And it's very sweet. I really like it. And this kind of technique and this kind of project is perfect for using all those real little tiny canes that you also have lying around. All right, so I'm taking silver. Now, this this one was black. We might as well do a different color and see what happens. Going to do silver. Now, by using silver, which is closer to the actual color of the stainless band, this background, the silver clay becomes less obvious. It becomes less critical as a design element. Um, and, and it will be less noticeable. Okay, so let's see what happens. I have rolled this through setting number three on my pasta machine. Uh, ta -ta, ta -ta. And I measured. Hello. And this is the opening is, oh, between an eighth and three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna take my handy dandy ruler here, doink, like so. And let me measure. I think that's good. Just like that. Let me take a little bit of a beveled cut there, and I am going to wrap this around and push it into the channel. I can stretch it slightly as I'm wrapping. And it does fit better when I do that. like so. Now, let me just oh, rotate it and push the clay in and try to get it all the way down in the channel itself. Maybe smooth the seam a bit. And it is sticking a bit above the channel. This is not a problem. I will simply trim it away with my blade. But I don't. <coughs> Louie! Shh! Everybody say good morning to Louie. Lulu. All right. Taking my blade. And I am just going to cut. And it is resting on the stainless steel on both sides of the channel. Okay. Now I'm using this blue blade. But let's try the rigid blade that I normally use and see. You know, I like the rigid blade better. Not exactly sure why, but it is cutting a bit easier. Now I'm just going to take and just gently rotate and run my finger this part of my thumb, along the clay, and that will eliminate any clay that is sitting there between the channel and the stainless steel. Just cleaning it up, basically. Okay. That's pretty good. 
that is pretty good. Now, if you look closely, you can see that when I was cutting, every now and then where I, when I would reposition the blade, it made this little tiny indent. So let's eliminate the indent just by texturing. The indent may still be there, but it is less visible. And I think that that's a good solution. If I can't eliminate it, then I will conceal it. Like so. And I do like the texture, so. Now, the canes that I'm going to be using are, as I said, one of the leaves that I made in that, you know, one cane, two leaf uh, tutorial. And then I have a really, really tiny little bullseye. And what this is, is red with a black wrap then with a gold wrap, then with black. Now, it doesn't look, oh, wait, actually, I'm sorry, that's orange. Orange, it's so tiny, it's not really gonna matter, but that's what this is. And here is the greatly reduced teeny, 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 tiny end. Okay, so I have also reduced this cane quite small, and what I'm going to do is just press it like that so that I'm creating a curve in the leaf. I can even shorten it just a tad. And now I will cut. And I think I'm gonna cut about, let's see, how many did I need? One, two, three, four, five, six. I needed six there, let's cut six again. Now, in terms of the thickness, I don't want it to be too thin. I don't want it to be too thick. That looks about right, one. Two. I would like them to be the same thickness. But I am not a machine. There's five, now here is number six. So, of course, they aren't exactly the same. Let's take the first one. Let me pick it up. And position it on. And then it'll curve this way and come back down. So the tip and the base of the leaf are actually resting on the same side. Now, uh, you know, you can arrange them any way you want. This is just, whoops, my choice, okay? Now I'm gonna take and do the opposite on the other side. They're so tiny, I can't keep picking them up. Okay, there we go. So now this one, doink, and then I will take this tip and send it up to that same side. So they're going like that. And that's what will happen as they work their way around. Doink. And then pull it back down to the same side. And as I said, you know, the arrangement is totally up to you. It could be just like the same direction all the way around. I just chose to have the curves go one way, then the other, then one, the same. Well, I think you get it. Hello. What is, what are you doing? Okay. Maybe I need to cut a few more. I seem to have made them a bit shorter, the leaves. And of course, the act of making them shorter and putting them closer together also means that they are taking up less space as they go around. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut maybe one more. It would have been nice if they had matched up perfectly, but they won't. If they do, it will be a miracle. I'm 
I don't know about you, but I'm not expecting a miracle. And this one, see, it seems to be a little bit too thin. So I'm not going to use it. I will try to cut one that is just a tad thicker. Oh, goodness. It's really close. Close, but no cigar. Okay, so I've got that space there. So that's when these little berry guys come in. All right, so let's take, and I thinned and reduced this end quite a bit. I want something a little bit bigger. Set that aside. Cut further down in my cane. Let us see if this is what I want. Okay, that's good. Now I'll take one that's reduced further. Maybe put it on this side. So I'll make just a tiny cluster of these berries to fill up that space. Yes, it's a typical morning in this household with the dogs barking and Vernon upstairs doing something in the kitchen. I'm not exactly sure what he's doing, but he's doing something. All right, now I can sort of scatter more of these little red berries around. So let's do that. And then this piece will be cured. And we will see what we shall see. This is going to be a sweet little ring. Nothing too fancy or too fussy. But I think a very good way of using your canes. Oh yeah, I like this. I like it. Come on, let go. Oh, that's very sweet. I like that a lot. I think this is a good use for this cane. And maybe I'll make one using the other cane I made in that same tutorial. So let me get these two in the oven and then I will be back. Black and silver. All right, so here are the rings. They are all cured. Oops, <laughs> this one has a little clay on it. Yeah, there's clay everywhere. Okay, so the only thing I did after was just lightly sand um, the cane slices with a fine grit sanding block, and that's because I wanted to even them out. They weren't perfectly even, and you know, it feels so much better. Now, the one thing that you have to bear in mind is when you sand you, you're probably going to hit the uh, stainless band. And when you do that, you're sort of providing a, what is it called, a Florentine finish, a brushed steel look. Um, so if you want it very shiny, then you're not going to sand because you won't be able to avoid actually hitting this metal with that sanding block. So anyway, here they are. I really like them a lot. Don't know whether I like the black or the silver. I like them both. And here's a little one that I made using one of the 
mud cloth canes. So it's a wonderful way to use all those mud cloth bands. You just have to reduce them very tiny. Okay, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed our little class. And um, I guess that's it. So this is Donna Cato signing off. Bye.